Hello. So, in this video, we are going to be talking about sets, the sort of language of context. So we're going to be talking about different sort of ways of demonstrating sets, common sets, and ways of putting sets together. So, sets. So we can start out with sort of the most natural or most obvious way of doing it. So we could just list some stuff, right? So this is sort of the most basic way of developing a set. And when we list stuff, typically with sets in general, but especially with lists, we usually want to give them these things a name. So we could say that this is A. Now, by convention, we usually try to make sets capital letters whenever we can. So you'll see sort of as we go throughout, anytime we talk about sets and they have some sort of name, there'll be capital letters. But there is some notation here that you sort of might not have sort of seen before, so just in case. The braces, this sort of leading brace here, this tells you that a set is coming. So this is saying the set of, and then you would read the contents because it's a list. So the set of one, two, three, four. And then that closing brace tells you that that's the end, right? So this is all of the set. The set A is one, two, three, and four. That's it. So this idea of a set, right, is a collection of things, and you can just list out the things, and that's one way of getting your set. Now, by sort of convention and by rule, uh, we, we don't want to have duplicates in a set. So if we had a set, right, if we tried to list out like one, one, two, three, four, we wouldn't write it that way. Instead, the set for this thing would be just one, two, three, four, right? So it would be just those sort of unique values we don't keep track of having it sort of repeat, okay? And moreover, we can, I'm gonna put that in loose quotes here, uh, we can do lists that are infinite. So, for example, if we wanna do all positive numbers, all positive integers, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, on and on forever, we can do that by putting in sort of an appropriate dot, 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 right? So that's what this is saying, is we're gonna have the sort of sequence or the set, one, two, three, four, etc. Now, if we're going to do that, obviously, we need to be able to establish that pattern, right? So it needs to be clear what that pattern is. A good rule of thumb is you want at least three terms. Four would be ideal uh, if there's any sort of ambiguity. But it's also sort of worth noting that establishing a pattern, sort of technically speaking, is impossible. <laughs> so like, there is uh, an actual mathematical theorem somebody has proved that given any number of terms, you could list out a million terms and do dot, dot, dot. You can make that next term any number you want and find a pattern that makes that work. So there's no way of sort of uniquely determining what that pattern should be. So because of that, there's a different way of handling especially infinite sets, and that's going to be set builder notation, okay? So set builder notation is this sort of other way where we describe what should be in the set. So if we have this sort of expression here or this um, definition, right? So here, this Z is supposed to be the name of the set. This is uh, sometimes called bold-faced Z, uh, but we'll sort of get into that later. When we sort of have this thing, then we would read it the following. So that first brace is still telling us that we're starting a set. So we read that as the set of. Now, this next, this next bit, this x, sort of like f of x notation, uh, this x is a dummy variable, it's a placeholder. So we read this as saying, okay, we have the set of all things, we're gonna call them x, or the set of all x, and then we need to describe what those x's have to have in order to be in this set. So the set of all x, such that, that's what this colon tells us, and the colon is saying, okay, the stuff that follows is going to be the sort of properties we need, and then whatever follows that are the properties that you need, right? So it's the set of, right, that first bracket piece, the set of all x, such that, and then whatever this thing requires. And to be clear, this thing may look like total gibberish to you. We're gonna cover that in just a second, what exactly this is saying. And then the closed brace tells us that that set is done, right? So it's the set of, right, all x such that x has this property, done, okay? And just as a, as a quick note, sometimes that colon is instead some long vertical line. So this is entirely equivalent, right? So you'd still read this as the set of all x, set of all x such that property close set. 
So as promised, I'm going to talk about what that property is. So this X, this weird sort of almost E thing, but not quite, and then that weird looking version of a Z. So that E thing is an incredibly important symbol in math. That is a symbol that means is an element of or is a member of. So what this tells you is that X is some part of some set where that set is this bold Z thing. And that bold Z or that uh, sort of, it's also called blackboard Z or uh, all, it has a variety of names. I'm just gonna call it Z and sort of you'll know by context. So this Z thing is the set of all integers. It's sort of a special set because the set of all integers comes up so much that we gave it this special symbol and that's sort of what it will always mean when you see that Z just in any context. So again, the integers, that's like your positive and negative whole numbers and your zero. So negative one, negative two, negative three, zero, one, two, three, et cetera. Okay, so that's what this means. X is an element of or a member of the set of integers. All right, now there's a little bit of wiggle room with set notation, set builder notation, um, especially when you have multiple properties or when your X is sort of pulled from a sub, like a known collection and piece of set. So that's what's happening here. So here, again, reading it the same way we would normally, that brace is telling us that we have the set of, right? So that's it's telling us we're looking at a set. That Z in, uh, that X in Z bit, that's telling us that we're looking at X, right? That's the dummy variable. But X is a member of Z integers. So in particular, we're only looking at integer values of X. So a sort of human way of reading this, right? Because the, the math way of reading this would be the set of x that are members of the integers. We don't speak like that as humans, <laughs> right? So we'd say the set of all integers x such that, right? That's what that colon means. And then we have a property. So in this case, x is greater than 17. So the actual set here then, it's only integers, right? That's what that orange part, that x member of z thing is. And it has to further satisfy the property that X is strictly larger than 17. So this set would be something like 18, 19, 20, and so on, okay? As another example, same deal here. We have an open brace that's telling us we're looking at a set. So we have the set of. Then we still have that X in Z, right? So it's telling us that we're looking at specifically, right? X is the dummy variable, but specifically they're integers. So we're looking at the set of all integers, X, Right, we're naming the dummy variable, such that, that's the colon, and then now we have a comma in our properties, right? So we have that x is greater than 17, comma, square root of x is less than 10, so that's telling us that it needs both of those properties, not either, both, right? It has to satisfy both of those things simultaneously. So x has to be larger than 17, and the square root of x has to be less than 10. So this would be equivalent to only integers, strictly bigger than 17, so 18, 19, 20, and so on, up to the point where the square root is strictly less than 10, which means that we're going sort of up to 99, not 100 because the square root of 100 is 10, not strictly less than 10. So we're looking at all the integers between 18 and 99, okay? But we can sort of capture that instead of trying to list all of those numbers, which would be a very long list, we can capture that in this sort of, uh, nice set building notation, okay? So as mentioned, this is the sort of ways of describing sets, but then we can manipulate sets. So in particular, uh, there's a sequence of, or a sort of grouping of what we call binary operations or just ways of combining two sets. First one, union, that's telling us that we're gonna take all of the things, right? And then put them all together, remembering that we don't count duplicates. So A union B, which looks like this weird U but without some sort of tail, right? So it's like a weird cup looking thing. Um, that'll be everything that appears in at least one of those two. But again, we, we make sure that each entry is unique. So we don't have one in twice down here, right? Because we only have one in the set. Only have one one in the set. <laughs> All right, intersection. So the idea of intersection is that we are going to look at things that are only in both sets. So here, when we look at the sequence of numbers in both of them, one is the only thing that shows up in both of them, and so the intersection is just the set of one. Uh, the intersection itself is sort of an upside down version of that U, right, or, or an N without the starting bit. 
But notice that I didn't say A intersection B equals one. This is very important. It's A intersect B equals the set of the value one, okay? So when you're doing any of these sort of set relationships, right, be it union, intersection, difference, the result is always a set, which means it has to be in brackets, okay? Always. Can't have a set that is not one of those things, okay? To be clear, it might already have a name, so you could write the name instead of something in brackets, or you could write the brackets. Either of those is fine. But almost always when doing these things, it'll end up having to be in brackets because you want to have a handy name to pull, okay? Lastly, uh, we sort of run into this one a little, not terribly often in this class, but it's still worth mentioning, and that's set difference. So set difference looks at the first thing, like A, and removes anything in that set that shows up in the second one, in this case, B, okay? So we want to look at anything that's sort of in both and remove it, essentially, from the, the lead one. So here, one shows in both, so I get rid of that. I would also get rid of the four and five if that showed up, leaving me with just two and three. So that means if I'm doing the set difference, I'm going to have just the set, again, the set, two and three. Now, again, some notes here. Uh, this piece here, this is the, the symbol, and it's like a fraction symbol, but the other direction, right? So normally your, your set symbol is gonna go sort of uh, that way, right? The, the other direction, and, uh, sorry, the, the fraction, right, goes the other direction. So the set one is, is the other one. That's the, that's the important distinction, because very different things in practice. As a note, we won't do this in this class, but as a note in other classes, you may also see this as written as A minus B. Um, and it's sort of important to know that that's not talking about sort of the numbers in A minus the numbers in B or something like that. That's not a thing. It's the same as this thing where you're, where you're looking at elements. You're talking about stuff that's in A and taking away anything that was in A that's in B. That's what, what this would mean. Um, because this sort of generates confusion, we're not gonna do this notation in this class but it does sometimes show up in other classes, okay? All right, so we mentioned, right, that there are some sort of common sets that show up, like that Z, the set of integers. So as a quick thing, we're gonna sort of cover those as well. So common set symbols. N is the nice set of natural numbers. So this, uh, again, I say N, it's technically like a bold-faced N or a blackboard N or depending on who you're talking to. Um, and that's the sort of, strictly positive integers. As a footnote here, I'll say some people like to include zero in this group, some people do not, and math people can get really uh, intense about which one is the correct one. So for the sake of this class, uh, just one, two, three, right? for the sake of the videos that you see, at least with me, that's gonna be the case, um, that zero is not a natural number. And if it comes up, you might ask, professors in other classes, whether they consider zero or not, uh, just know that they're going to be like, oh, well, obviously the answer is, and then whatever they think is the right answer, because people are really intense about this. <laughs> All right, so Z, we saw that one already, set of integers, so this is positive and negative and zero. Another common one, Q. So Q is a set of all rational numbers, those are the numbers that right have some integer on the top divided by integer on the bottom, so basically your sort of natural fractions, like one-half, three-fourths, stuff like that. Then we have R. This is the set of real numbers. So basically everything that you normally are used to dealing with, uh, not complex numbers, although we won't sort of do much with that in this class. We do have a section on real numbers coming up, uh, sorry, on complex numbers and real numbers, the sort of difference between them coming up, but it's sort of in a very specific use case when we talk about polynomials. So we will talk about complex numbers, but you don't run into them a lot uh, going forward. So just to be clear. So those are the sort of common set symbols that we sort of would obviously think about, the ones that we're sort of representing sets of numbers. We also talked about lists, right? So lists, we can do things, even infinite lists. So zero, one, two, three, dot, 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 dot. Uh, and then because infinite lists sort of are bad form in some sense. We have that set builder notation. So we could accomplish this by saying, for example, all integers, right? So set builder, the set of all integers x, where x is strictly uh, greater than zero and zero, right? So greater than or equal to zero, meaning that we have the 
one, two, three, et cetera, and zero, right? So we could write this list in this way instead, and this is very specific, right? This is, there's no ambiguity here, unlike with the list form. Now, just to be, again, clear that x being an integer is a property. We can move it to the other side if we want. So another way of writing this exact same thing would be to write something like all things x such that x is an integer and x is greater than or equal to zero, right? So instead of saying all integers such that, we could say all things, blue cars, x uh, could be a number, could be things in a vending machine, such that, oh, well, okay, x is actually an integer, so scratch all that crazy stuff. We are only looking at integers such that that integer is greater than or equal to zero, okay? So this is another totally equivalent, totally fine. One's not more sort of right than another. Now, there is one last thing to think about, which is what would happen if we try to take, say, the set of integers and remove the set of real numbers? Well, the set of integers are, right, 0, 1, 2, 3, et cetera, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, et cetera. But the set of real numbers are all of those and more, right? So I've essentially started with the set, the integers, and removed everything from it. And this is sort of weird because we can't say, okay, well, then the set is zero. Well, zero is a number, right? And zero is a real number. It's been removed. We can't say that set is zero because that, that's a thing that can't be in there because R is in there, right? R has been taken out. So what do we do? Well, this gives us sort of the last symbol, which is not at all obvious. In fact, was invented much later than the rest of this, almost in amusing parallel to the number zero itself, which is this weird symbol, which is actually called the empty set. So this, this symbol, like the zero with a line through it, is actually a set, not just a fancy way of writing zero. It's a set of nothing, sometimes also called the null set. Um, so the, there is an important distinction between zero and the null set or the empty set, which is that the, the null set and empty set are sets that contain nothing at all, not even zero, okay? So that's what happens if you had stuff and you remove all of it. That's what you end up with. All right, so what do we do? So we talked about sets, language of sets, right, and sort of way that we represent context in this class. Uh, we talked about ways of sort of defining these sets with lists and set builder notation. And we're going to be sort of leaning very heavily on set builder notation. Basically, everything we're going to be doing when we talk about sets are going to be set builder notation. And then we talked about how to manipulate these things, right, with the union, intersection, set difference. And importantly, all of these cases, these things are going to be sort of sets at the end, right? So they always need that bracket uh, brace bit, right, the, the squiggly bracket, unless it already has a name, which is unlikely, but it happens. And we covered those sort of special names that are sort of always defined, always there, with that N for natural numbers, Z for integers, Q for the rational numbers, and that R for real numbers. And then we had that sort of last little bit, the null set or the empty set that comes up occasionally. Okay? So that is that. Thank you.